Today we're going to be talking about one of the most common exercises of all time and why there's actually a lot more to it than you think, both in terms of what it can give you technique-wise and also in terms of musicality and creativity. So the exercise we're talking about is four fingers in a row. Sometimes this is called uh, a spider exercise where there might be a component of still continuing that motion of first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger repeated, but moving one finger down at a time. I'm gonna encourage everyone to consider all the combinations of these four fingers. We call this the 24 permutation. So rather than just doing one, two, three, four, we have one, two, four, three. One, three, two, four. One, three, four, two. One, four, two, three. One, four, three, two. You'll notice ones like that, they actually start to feel like our normal kind of all descending four, three, two, one patterns. They're just staggered with where they start, where the sense of the, the downbeat is, you could say. Then we're gonna have our sets of twos. There's gonna be six uh, permutations for each finger. So starting with our middle finger, finger two, we're gonna have two, one, three, four. Two, one, four, three, another one that feels fluid, like it's just this, one direction once you get going. Two, three, one, four. Ah, two, three, four, one. Another one of those ones. Two, four, one, three. Two, four, three, one. We're halfway. Let's do three, one, two, four. Three, one, four, two. Three, two, one, four. Another nice fluid one. Three, two, four, one. Three, four, one, two. Another fluid one. Four, one, two, three. We're on to our fours now, I believe, unless I missed one. Four, one, three, two. One more time. <laughs> um, four, two, one, three. Four, two, three, one. Uh. And now let's do four, three, one, two. Uh. And then four, three, two, one. In terms of the technical aspect of it, there's a, a lot of ways that you can really get it down. One is just to loop it. We don't think to do this as much when we're doing the first one, because that's not so hard. It's, it's a pretty intuitive motion, right? And this is why then we uh, level up to going, okay, let's go and move through our strings, right? Of course you can do that as well. There's our second permutation, one, two, four, three. So you can do all that kind of up, down motion, but it's also important to try actually horizontal motion. Um, and so this probably feels easy with like the first permutation or the last permutation, the first permutation being one, two, three, four, and the last one being four, three, two, one. We're probably a little more used to this idea of moving to the right or left. where we have to get used to this feeling of our index leading every time. But there's some weird ones where we have to get used to just a different finger doing it. Like let's say we do three, one, two, four. We have to get used to this feeling of the ring finger kind of replacing the note that the pinky is on. A little awkward. Also weird going in that direction, which is, that's what all this is for. You know, try it in all these different ways to really ingest that pattern. It's not enough just to do it in one spot. You can also think about diagonal motion, for example, like. Because you'll notice sometimes with some patterns, you're like, let's do a different one. Let's, let's do one, three, two, four. That's, that's actually a really common one too, but. You'll notice like. Maybe this way feels easier than. That way or some sort of. And, and that's the point of doing it in all these different ways. And that's the point of the 24 permutations in the first place. The spirit of them is to say, try every combination, try every direction, because it's the ones that you really struggle with that are gonna help you the most compared to just grinding one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 10,000 times. Cause it's like, dude, after the first couple hours, you get the muscle memory. You'd be better off preparing yourself for more types of situations. So one of the most common criticisms of this type of exercise, if you hear a lot of stuff, is that it's like, dude, this sounds like chromatic mumbo jumbo, which it definitely does. It definitely sounds kind of ridiculous. But here's the thing to think about. Where can I use this combination of the fingers in a comfortable way where I already see it on the fretboard in key? Let's take, for example, the permutation three, one, two, four. So by itself, 
it sort of seems impractical. And you might be like, well, why would you practice that loads? There's structures that can benefit from these types of fingerings, these kind of orders of the fingers. For example, a 3 one 2 4 spread across 3 on D string, 1 on our G string, 2 on B string, 4 on high E. That is the uh, major third, perfect fifth, root, and major third of a major arpeggio. Let's look at another example. Let's say we use the permutation 4, 3, 1, 2. Again, by itself, sounds pretty chromatic. If we just take the middle finger and pop it up the string, sounds like a lovely perfect fifth, sharp four, major third, and root note from Lydian. Let's say we want to use two, one, four, three. This is going to be a major seven type arpeggio. We have one major third, our octave, and a major seven. Here's an example of two, three, one, four. You can see this as a sus two or a sus four arpeggio, right? Uh, sus two would be like if we thought of it as maybe this was a C sharp major that we turn into a C sharp sus two. Here's a random lick that uses two, three, four, one. Phrygian vibe. Here's a cool 2413 lick that you can use from Lydian. Resolving at Ionian. And then here's an example of like an F minor lick we could possibly say, where we go 2431. See, if we stretch out the frets, a lot of these become very usable. I hope this inspires you to do some practice and chew on these 24 permutations. Tons of technique gains to be had, and don't think that there's no musical outcomes. It's really up to your creativity, and you'll find you're already using a lot of these combinations in existing licks and arpeggios and such. You just don't realize it's happening. As always, if you're interested in private lessons, message me on Instagram. And if you don't know music theory and you're looking to learn it, check out my theory course in the description. If you like learning from me, you'll probably vibe with it.